here about uh, the, the PDF. Well, it should ideally be uploaded in the resources section of, uh, of the auditorium of your class. It should be there. So, uh, but I'll... How are the others um, following along? It's not there. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. The PDF is not posted, is it? Okay. So what we will do is um, let me just post a link here. Yeah, you can go to APC Publications. Let me just post the link here. So you can um, copy paste that link in your browser and uh, apcw.org slash books and you will can you know click on english uh, or any other language and this book will be there baptism in the holy spirit right and you can follow along or after the class we will upload it okay so you can download that but right now you can do this you can go to this website and you can download this book. Okay, okay, we'll we'll get started, right? Okay, so where did we stop? We looked at uh, what was happening with Saul, right? Acts chapter nine, and we saw that uh, Saul had uh, you know encountered Jesus. Now he was filled with the Spirit as well. He could see, and uh, you know, while trying to find out, okay, what happened when he was filled with the Spirit? We see that, okay. Probably he also started praying in tongues because in 1 Corinthians 14, he says, I speak in tongues more than you all. Okay? So we know that either that time it happened or eventually he began to pray in tongues. Okay, okay. now you might think, okay, why, why, why are we talking about this over and over again? Why tongues and all that? You no, know, we'll come to that a little later. Okay? Um, so we looked at three separate instances or incidents in the book of Acts. Now we're going to look at the fourth one. Okay, um, which is in Acts chapter 10. Okay, Acts chapter 10. And this is about, uh, this is in a person's house whose name was Cornelius. Okay, Acts chapter 10. It's in the house of Cornelius. What happened was Cornelius had gathered some of his friends, people whom he knew, because he had a visitation, a supernatural visitation, and God had given him instructions to ask for Peter to come, right? He gave very specific instructions like the address, the place where they should go, they should bring or invite Peter. And Peter will tell them certain things, right? He'll tell them about, about this thing called life. So Cornelius obeyed. So he sent his trusted soldier and a couple of them, people to go and bring Peter. Now Peter has now come to the house, okay? And this is... Uh, this uh, verse 44 is about what Peter does. Peter is ministering. Peter is sharing the gospel. And this is what happens. Okay, so let's look at uh, Acts chapter 10 verse 44. It says, while Peter was still speaking these words. Okay, so what are those words? The verses before that talk, talks about it. You know, verse, um, sorry, I think it's verse 34 onwards. It says, Peter opened his mouth and he started preaching. And he says, you know, God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. And all that about the Lord and, and how he died and how he, he rose again and God raised him up, etc. So he's speaking all this, right? He's sharing with them. And the Bible says in verse 44, While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell upon them, all those who heard uh, the, this word, and those of the circum circumcision who believed were astonished. Okay, we are looking at Acts chapter 10, verse 45. Okay, do you see that? Acts chapter 10, verse 45, right? And those who believed were astonished. Astonished meaning they were surprised, they marveled. You know, why? It says, as many as came with Peter, because the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles also. Gentiles meaning non-Jewish people. Okay, the gift of the Holy Spirit was poured out. Now, they were, they were surprised. 
primarily one. You know, one reason is they thought that this was only for the Jews. Okay, now we see the non-Jewish people and they are also experiencing the baptism, the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Okay, that's one reason. But reason number two is this, right? It says, for they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Okay, so Holy Spirit filled them. And here are all these people who have just heard the gospel. And yes, which means that even as they were hearing, they believed. And it says the Holy Spirit filled them. And we see that they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Okay, then... Verse 47, then Peter says, Can anyone forbid water that these should not be baptized who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? Okay, so Peter was there in the upper room along with the 120 others, or he was part of that 120 disciples who received, who, who experienced the baptism of the Holy Spirit and spoke in other tongues. So he's saying, hey, this is the same as that. They have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. Right? So he's testifying to that. And we see that happening. And then he says, hey, let's get them baptized in water. Okay, so some of us might have questions, you know, what should come first? Holy Spirit baptism or water baptism? Right? So there's no specific order. Here, the people were filled with the Holy Spirit. They spoke in other tongues and then they were baptized in water. Right? When we read about what happened in Samaria, Acts chapter 8, we see that they were baptized in water, they believed in Jesus, baptized in water, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit when Peter and John went there and prayed over them. So we see that you know, there's no specific order, uh, you know, it can happen in any order. Okay, so that's the fourth instance. Right? Uh, these are uh, believers, who had, people who had become believers in the house of Cornelius. Then the fifth one that we see, and the last one that we see in the book of Acts, specifically mentioning here about people being filled, is in Acts chapter 19. Okay, If you turn to Acts chapter 19. Acts chapter 19, this is about the believers, people who are already believers, in the place called Ephesus. Okay, The place called Ephesus. Okay, Let's read from verse 1. It says, and it happened while Apollos was in Corinth that Paul, having passed through the upper regions, came to Ephesus and finding some disciples. Okay, who's a disciple? Follower of follower of anything, actually, but here we are talking about follower of followers of Jesus. So they are they are made a very clear decision to follow. Jesus, meaning teachings of Jesus, the person, as a person, Jesus, whatever he's, you know, he's teaching, the values, his life example, everything, right? That person is a disciple. Right? Okay, so he finds some disciples and he says to them, okay, this is what he says, verse 2, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? Okay, so it's a very strange question to ask someone just meeting them. He says, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? So what does he mean by that? You know, These people have already become, he says, they are disciples. He found some disciples, which means they believed in Jesus. They followed Jesus. right? So he's asking this question, did you believe in the Holy Spirit? Or did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? Okay, so their answer is even more surprising. What did they answer? He said, they said, we have not heard about the Holy Spirit. Right? We have not heard about, we have not so much as heard about the Holy Spirit. And then he goes on to do something. Okay, so he asks something again. He says, you know, what kind of baptism did you have? They said, we've heard only about John's baptism. Okay, John was baptizing people to repentance. Uh, we've heard about that and that kind of, that is the kind of baptism that we received. So he teaches them. He says, See, John's baptism was a baptism unto repentance, but he was, John was talking about Jesus. In him you need to believe, in him you need to be baptized. So he gets them baptized again. It says, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus, he baptizes them. There were about 12 of them, right? He baptizes them. Then what happens? Then he says, in verse 6, it, it says, 
And when Paul had laid hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. Okay, they spoke with tongues and prophesied. Here again, you know, we see that again, the supernatural work of God. They spoke with tongues and something additional is mentioned there. What is it? They prophesied, which means they heard the words that come from God. They spoke. Maybe it was something futuristic. Maybe it was something that was happening, like a word of knowledge. Maybe they prophesied. Prophecy simply is hearing and speaking or hearing and doing what God is releasing. Very simple. It's God speaking to man through man. Very simple definition of prophecy. Right? God speaking to man through man. Right? So this is what they did. They were praying in tongues and, and they were saying, hey, this is what God is saying. Right? This is what I believe God is telling you that he, he wants to do this, this, this in your life. This is what you know, God has done in your life. So they were prophesying as they were filled with the Holy Spirit. Okay? So we see this happening. So you know, we, how many instances did we look at? Five. Right? We looked at five. And in how many instances do we see that people were baptized with the Holy Spirit and they spoke in tongues? How many does it say very directly? Three. What are they? First one, upper room, Acts chapter 2. Second instance, house of Cornelius, Acts chapter 10. Right? House of Cornelius, it says that they heard them magnify God, they speak in tongues. Then we see in Acts chapter 19, where it says very specifically, they spoke in tongues and they prophesied as well. Okay, So three instances. What about the other two? The second one was in Samaria. Bible says something supernatural happened that Simon gave money. He says, I want this. Then the other one that we see is about Paul. Right? In Acts chapter 9. So about Paul, we know that he eventually prayed in tongues. Here also we see that something supernatural, most likely it was praying in tongues. Because it must have been something that Simon saw. Must have been something that Simon heard, right? And felt. So he says, I want this. I want this power. Okay. So the common thing that we see is that they started praying in other tongues. Okay. So that is something that we can expect as well. That is something for us too, for us as believers. So what are some things that, um, that conclusions that we can come through. You know, what are some learnings from all these five instances? What are some learnings? First one is that when we are baptized with the Holy Spirit, we are baptized with power, power of the Holy Spirit, the gifts of the Holy Spirit are released. First thing. Why are they done? Because Jesus very clearly said that so that you can be witnesses. You can be clothed with power and you can be witnesses. Okay, that is something that we learn. The second thing that we see is that... Um, that what qualifies us to receive? What do you think qualifies us? Qualifies meaning what is your qualification? What qualification do you have to possess in order to be filled, in order to be baptized with the Holy Spirit? Huh? That's all. Simple. Believe in Jesus. We have to clean your heart. Okay, we have two qualifications. What is the third one? Ladies, huh? Repentance. Sept Sorry, what did you say? Separated from unbelievers. Okay. What else? Okay, Sri Raj says, walk according to scripture. Andrew, to be born again. Um, what? Accept Jesus Christ in your life to have relationship with him. Okay. Accept Jesus in your life. Okay, let's, let's look at all these five instances. First instance, they were disciples. Follower of the Lord Jesus. They received Jesus. Second instance, Samaria. They believed in Jesus. They were born again new believers. Right? 
probably a few days old, maybe a few weeks, maybe. Right? How much ever time it took for news to reach Jerusalem and for these people to come from Jerusalem to reach Samaria. That's all. That's how old they were in Christ. Right? Then the third time, third instance about Paul, right? We don't know whether it was right then, right there, because he was, I think a few days he had accepted the Lord. Yes or no? A few days. Before that, he was persecuting Jesus. Now, he's accepted the Lord. It says he was filled with the Holy Spirit. Right? Cornelius' house, just then, just then, maybe they smoked some cigarette outside, came and attended the meeting. <laughs> right? Possible, no? Possible. They came, attended, believed in Jesus, Filled with the Holy Spirit, praying in tongues. Hey, just now you were smoking outside. <laughs> then, fifth instance, they were anyway followers of the Lord Jesus. They were disciples. So the only common thing that we see is that a person needs to be born again. Receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior. That's the only qualification. Right? So that's why, you know, sometimes for the Jews, it was like a shock. You know, how can it be? Here we have the law. We keep the feasts. We keep these days. We strict laws, dietary laws. And these guys are eating pork and everything. <laughs> right? Jews are not supposed to eat, right? All those things. And here is this. They believe in Jesus and they are filled with the Holy Spirit. It was a kind of a shock for them. How can it be? That is how it is. By faith, you receive, you believe, you become a child of God, and that qualifies you for baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now, that does not mean that I continue to live as I used to live. We're not saying that, right? That I continue to live like that, I continue to have my old habits and continue. No, we, we have a new life, and we are empowered to live that new life, baptized in the Holy Spirit, filled with power to be a witness. Hey, this is the power of God in me to live a holy life. This is the power of God in me to minister, to bring healing into something that needs change in your life, in your body, in your mind. This is the power of life, uh, God's, uh, you know, a Holy Spirit in me to love, to forgive, to have compassion. This is the power of God to be witnesses like that to the world outside. Yeah. So that's something that we see. What other, what, what, what other things that we can we learn? Okay, uh, let's say, you know, if you look at chapter 3, it has some, some common questions, right? The first question, um, okay, what page is it on? I can just tell the, uh, page number 14, 1, 4, okay, it's chapter 3, and here we have some questions, page number 14, if you're following in the book. Okay, um, okay. So it talks about, you know, first question is, you know, what is this indwelling and uh, baptism? You know, have I not already received the Holy Spirit? Then how can you say, you know, have more of the Holy Spirit, be filled with the Holy Spirit when I have already have the Holy Spirit in me? Yes. So the Bible is clear, right? That when we believe, we are born again by the Holy Spirit. Galatians 4 talks about that. Okay. Um, I think, uh, yeah, Galatians 4 and verse 6. God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. Okay, it's because of the spirit of God in us that we cry out, Father God. So we already have. He indwells us. Okay. This those indwelling and this baptism. No, so if, he, if he's already there, what is this question of, Spirit of God falling upon me, Spirit of God filling me, baptizing me. What is that? Right? So the, the thing is this, God is infinite. Man is finite. Okay? So we can be in only one place. If I'm here, I'm here. Right? Spirit, soul and body. I can't be in two places. I can't be in three places. I'm here. And when it comes to God, He is infinite. He is infinite omnipresent. So there's more to him. So yes, he indwells, 
but there's more of him that he wants to impart or fill us with and give ourselves, um, uh, give of himself to us. Right? He's infinite. There's more. So that is why, you know, it, it says in scripture that many times they were filled. There's more of him. He wants to give us. So, so that's the thing. There is indwelling and there is also the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And the Lord Jesus, you know, if you look at John chapter 4 and John chapter 7, it's, um, it's there in the book uh, as well. The Lord Jesus talked about this. Okay, this is what he says. John chapter 4 verse 13. Whoever drinks of this water will thirst again. Okay, this is, he's having this conversation with the woman at the well, the Samaritan woman. Whoever drinks of this water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. Okay. So he's talking about eternal life. He's talking about something that is happening in the heart of the person who receives this eternal life. He says, it will become in this person a spring, a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. This says something. There is a flow of water in you. John chapter 7. Verse 37, okay. Jesus stood and cried saying, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. But this he spoke concerning the spirit whom those believing in him would receive for the Holy Spirit was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. Okay, very important, you know, verse Declaring some very important foundational truth. Okay, this is what he says. He's referring to the Holy Spirit as rivers. The first one, John chapter 4, a fountain springing up into everlasting life, which means the indwelling. We can liken it to the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. There's something for you. you no, know, there's something for you to live every day. But here we see there's a different measure. There's a difference between a spring and a river. Right? The flow of water, the quantity of water, the kind of impact, everything is different. So here it says, he spoke concerning the spirit, the work of the spirit, whom those believing in him would receive. Very important, the last part of it, for the Holy Spirit was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. Okay? So all these instances, when did it happen? Was it, was it during the earthly ministry, this book of Acts, during the Jesus' earthly ministry? Was it after the crucifixion? Was it after the ascension? After Jesus ascended to the Father, which means that here, you know, he's, he's talking about this, you know, Jesus, the Holy Spirit was not given because Jesus was not yet glorified. So all this is talking about the fact that Jesus ascended, he was glorified, and he sent the promise of the father okay so yes we we have we qualify for the experience of the spring but we also qualify for the experience of the river the spring and the river talking about the indwelling presence and talking about the baptism of the holy spirit okay right any questions in that about indwelling about baptism with regard to that Okay. Are we clear, right, that there are, these are two separate instances, but both for the believer, right? Okay. Okay, so what about different kinds of baptisms, you know, like we're just discussing with one person here. 1 Corinthians 12, 13 says, by one spirit, we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and have been made to drink into one spirit. Okay, so there's only, say, which means, hey, there's one body, there's one baptism. How can you talk about anything else? Right? So, yes, we are baptized into one body. When we believe, the scripture says, when we believe in Jesus, we are baptized. Baptized means what? Immersed. Right? Immersed, placed, covered. The Bible says that when we believe, we are baptized into one body. We are placed 
into the spiritual body of Christ. Each one of us. So that is also called a baptism. We are baptized into the body of Christ. So he says here, we are baptized into one body. Whether you're a Jew, whether you're a Greek, we are baptized. We are the body of Christ. Spiritually, we are placed in the body of Christ. Secondly, there is also water baptism. Right? Where people are baptized in water as a sign of repentance. As a sign of... Why are you baptized in water? To declare that you belong to Jesus. To declare that the death, burial and resurrection of the Lord is active in your body. You also experience the same thing. Okay, So it's an outer declaration of an inner change. Something that happened on the inside. So water baptism. Then the third one that we see is the Holy Spirit baptism. That we are baptized, immersed, filled with the Holy Spirit. Right? Okay. Then... Again, this very interesting question. Why is it that baptism of the Holy Spirit and tongues are related? Why is it? What about, you know, anything else? Why is it, you know, there's so much talk about tongues? Or oh, this, you know, all these Pentecostal churches and you know, talking about tongues and what Holy Spirit baptism. Why, why is it? Right? Well, the answer is simply this. When we looked at scripture, we see that. Right? We see that proof. We see God manifesting, the Spirit of God, you know, manifesting that gift in people who are born again. So it's, it's, um, it'll be good for us to study what is this tongues? Right? What is this gift of tongues? What does it accomplish? Does it have any benefit at all? Right? Why is God so, uh, you know, so, so, uh, why does he feel that it's important to release this? Why is it so common? When people are baptized in the Spirit. Right? So for us to think about that and understand that, then we will understand, okay, maybe this is why God you know, feels that we need to receive this. We need to walk in this. Okay? So tongues, what is tongues? We see that this is a language that you have not learned. Right? This is a language that you have not learned. It's, it's not your mother tongue. It's some other language. And how do you speak it? The Bible says, Acts chapter 2, they spoke in other tongues as the Holy Spirit gave them utterance. The Holy Spirit gave them the words, they spoke it. Who spoke it? Who spoke the words? Who spoke the words? Did God speak the words? No. Holy Spirit gave the words. God gave the words. But the human beings, the disciples, they spoke it. Which means that it's like this, I sense this word in my heart, but if I don't speak it, I don't speak it. If I do, I do. Right? So I sense this word, but I need to speak it. So that's what happened here. Right? The Holy Spirit gave them the words. They sense that they needed to, you know, there's this word, there's, I feel this, I need to speak it out, but I don't know this language, which means that I don't understand this language. Right? I don't know the meaning of these words. I don't know the meaning of these sounds, whether they mean anything or not. You know, I've always spoken words that mean something, but how can I say something which does not, to my mind, have meaning? Right? That's what it was. Right? The Holy Spirit gave them the words, they spoke it out. Okay? Something that we see about tongues is, it could be a human language or earthly language. Right? In Acts chapter 2, we see it was an earthly language. You know, they all understood. Hey, the people who were listening, they said, hey, this is my language. How can they speak? They were surprised that they were speaking the language, but it was their language. But the Bible also says, in the very same instance, that some of them thought, they mocked, they made fun of them because those words didn't make any sense. Right? Except, uh, sorry, in, when we go to 1 Corinthians 13, Paul says, if I speak in the tongues of men and tongues of angels, but if I don't have love, then it means nothing. What is he saying? The reality is, when it comes to tongues, it could be an earthly language. It could be a language on earth. But it could also be a heavenly language, which means it's unearthly. It's not part of earth. 
anywhere in the world you go and search you will not find that language it because it is not of the earth it is of heaven it's a heavenly language so that is also possible right so that's why you know sometimes we have this we have these questions you know he use you are speaking in tongues but i don't understand it it doesn't seem like any earthly language it doesn't seem like tamil kannada whatever it seems just this is just some you know just some utterance it doesn't make you don't understand it i don't understand it i don't think it's tongues right well paul himself says in 1 corinthians 14 if i speak in a tongue my understanding is unfruitful what does it mean hey i'm not able to understand what i'm praying right he's talking about tongues he says i'm speaking i'm praying in a tongue but i don't understand it my my mind does not make sense it doesn't make sense rationally but he also says he who prays in a tongues edifies himself you're building yourself up in the spirit your spirit soul and body so in your spirit there is something building up there is progress there is construction that is happening you're being edified okay so well tongues could be earthly tongues could be heavenly but it edifies you could you might you know when somebody else is speaking and you might understand it you may not but the fact is that the holy spirit gives the words but you speak it out and the bible also talks about different kinds of tongues okay tongues as a personal prayer language you know there's another book called the wonderful benefit of praying in tongues you know for those of you who are online you can actually um you know go to that same website you can download that book as well it is free and the wonderful benefit of praying in tongues so you can you know um you read that okay so um mr venkatesan kattayan you raised your hand uh, do you have a question mr venkatesan okay um okay if you have a question you can ask right uh, you can put it on the chat as well okay okay another question like is speaking in tongues the evidence of being filled being baptized in the spirit okay is speaking in tongues praying in tongues the evidence what is an evidence proof somebody is baptized in the holy spirit hey he's praying in tongues okay he's baptized this person is not praying in tongues therefore not baptized you know so is that correct okay now when we looked at all these five instances in the book of acts we see that it is an evidence a person being baptized praying in tongues is an evidence but we also know that the holy spirit you know the the gifts belong to the holy spirit and the holy spirit can release these gifts because in the last incident that we saw these people prayed in tongues and they also prophesied which is also one of the nine gifts which are listed in the holy spirit uh, listed you know in 1 corinthians 12 so well it could be any gift because it's a manifestation of the holy spirit so yes it is an evidence when we look at these when we look at these instances in scripture but that does not mean that god can release other gifts as a result of baptism of the holy spirit okay but the thing is this we see that that's a common occurrence or a common gift so if you are not yet praying in tongues pray believe expect right um you don't have to say you know that's for all believer other believers not for me no it is for you right so you don't have to say that maybe maybe i i i know that god has given me god will give me other gifts but maybe not tongues no you don't have to disqualify yourself right so that is why you know we we are looking at this question in this manner and answering in this manner yes it is possible it is possible for every believer to be baptized in the holy spirit it is possible by every believer in the, to be baptized in the holy spirit and pray in tongues okay the thing is this can all believers pray in tongues yes but do all believers pray in tongues no right so that's the thing and then when you ask this question why there could be many reasons many reasons like for example when i believed 
I, I was exposed to praying in tongues. A lot of my friends, they would pray in tongues, you know, when, whenever we met for prayer. But I never thought that I could or I never really seek God after it. And I never really said, God, I want this. Because I didn't understand, I didn't know about these gifts. I didn't know that it was for me. Till many years after that, many years after I became a believer, I think almost eight years, one person taught and said, hey, this is for you also. I said, okay, then, you know, why, why am I not praying? You know, why am I not praying in tongues? Have you asked? Have you prayed? Have you believed? I said, no. If God wants to give it, he'll give it, right? How can you ask for a gift? You know, birthday, somebody comes home. Do you ask, hey, where's my gift? <laughs> no, you don't. So that was my reasoning. If it's a birthday, you know, why should I ask for my gift? Hey, today is my birthday, give me my gift. I will not ask. But the thing is this. Here, when it comes to scripture, when it comes to gifts, the Bible says, pursue love and desire spiritual gifts. You have a desire for it. You ask God. And God will fill you and God will give you. Right? So you need to have a desire for the gifts. Okay. Another question. Okay. Uh, we have a question here from Daniel Oliver. Okay. How can we know we are speaking in tongues through the Holy Spirit and not by our own mind or brain? Yeah. So that's a, that's a very common question, right? Um, that we have, okay, especially if we are just started praying in tongues, then our mind tells us, hey, you are just making it up, right? You are just acting, you are just making it up, you're just trying to talk like another person. Uh, it's not for you. Okay. Now the thing is, this is by faith. By faith in God. Okay, whom are we asking? Whom are we praying to? The Lord Jesus. Right? Is he, is he good or bad? Right? Will he give you something substandard? No. If we ask and be believe, and is he a partial God? No. So it's a step of faith. And when you take a step of faith, it is possible that we have all these doubts, all these questions. It is possible. But continue in faith. What you started in faith, continue in faith. Faith in Jesus. right? And then you will realize that, hey, all these questions, all these doubts, and everything will just go away. Yeah. Um, well, you know, um, I've heard of, you know, people saying, you know, I, I know I've asked for tongues, but nothing happened and a lot of people were watching. So I said some things so that they won't, you know, pressurize me. <laughs> One person actually said that, you know, he said, uh, people are praying over me and they're saying, you know, all kinds of things. So I said the Lord's prayer in Tamil and they thought, you know, they didn't know Tamil. They thought it was tongues. Then they let me go. You know, under pressure, you know, people do all these kind of things. It is possible, right? But the genuine is for everybody through faith. So what you start in faith, continue in faith. Yes, it's natural to have these kind of questions in our minds. Uh, but yeah. Um, so the thing is, Daniel, um, your question is, you know, is it um, by my mind or my spirit or my brain is your question. You know, what you're asking is, is it my own natural effort, right? So the, the answer is this, you know, it is you who is speaking. It is the person, is a believer who is speaking those words, right? So it is not like, you know, it, it is not something that you are not aware of. It is not something that, that bypasses your effort. No, your effort and your awareness is there, right? You are aware that you're speaking and you are making an effort to speak those words because these are your faculties, your tongue, everything, right? But... The words are put in your heart, in your spirit by the Holy Spirit. So that's the difference. Right? Okay. Uh, then another question. Um, should we feel something like a bubbling effect when one speaks in tongues? Is this associated to a feeling? Is it okay not to have any feeling? Yeah. So it does not say it is by faith, which means it's not by feelings. Now, feelings might be there. Emotions might be there. Or feelings may not be there. Emotions may not be there. Right? Um, so, yeah, so don't go by feeling, don't just go by faith, uh, feelings might come and that's fine. Okay. 
So another statement here, many of the churches don't allow to speak in tongues. Yes, uh, that's true. That's a reality. But as a believer, just understand that according to the word of God, this is for you, right? So, um, so maybe in a church setting, you know, Paul writes about how tongues should be used. Okay. Um, so as a believer, during your personal time, your quiet time, nothing is preventing you, stopping you from praying in tongues. You know, maybe you're at home, you just got up and you want to worship the Lord, you want to pray, right? Maybe 5 a.m. to 5.30 a.m., you know, you just set your time and you can just pray in tongues. Nobody can stop you, right? So maybe in a congregational setting, again, you know, if you read through the wonderful benefits of praying in tongues, it talks about, you know, in a congregational setting, uh, how should you actually pray in tongues, you know, just between you and the Lord. 1 Corinthians 14, the last few verses talk about that. Maybe I'll just read that out. Okay, 1 Corinthians 14, uh, while talking about tongues and everything, he says, you know, in the church, if you're speaking, which means if you're coming forward, for example, like me, if I'm here and I begin to pray in tongues or speak in tongues, Paul says there should be an interpretation, meaning there should be an explanation of what is being spoken, only then those who hear will be blessed. Okay? So there is another aspect of tongues, tongues for interpretation, right? Maybe it's a message from God, it's a prophetic word, it is spoken in tongues. Oh, only when people, when there's interpretation, people are blessed. So that's what he says. But then towards the end of the chapter, 1 Corinthians 14, he says in verse 39, therefore, brethren, desire earnestly to prophesy and do not forbid to speak with tongues. Okay, Which means that between you and God, you can speak. Let me just share another verse. Um, okay. Okay, verse 28. Okay, chapter 14, verse 28. But if there is no interpreter, let him keep silent in church. It's again talking about tongues. Let him keep silent in church. And he goes on to explain what is that silent in church means. It says, let him speak to himself and to God. So which means you're, he's saying you're silent in church. It means you're not speaking out to the congregation, but you can speak between you and God. So that is what is it. That is what is permissible, right? Okay. So Andrew, many people speak against tongues, referring to 14.8. I think that's what we were looking at right now, right? 14.8 um, <clears throat> onwards. So in a, in a congregational setting, yeah. So we should not confuse between congregational setting and personal edification because it is there for us. We are, you know, just like the New Testament church, and it is for, uh, for all of us, right? Okay, unlike it is mentioned in Acts chapter 2, 6, when someone speaks, no one understands what they are speaking. Yes, so, yeah, so John, um, so that's the difference. So we looked at, you know, earthly language, we looked at heavenly language, where Paul is saying, you know, if I, if I am, he's talking about, uh, let me just sh share that verse. <clears throat> Acts 14, Sorry, um, 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 14. He says, for if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is <clears throat> unfruitful. Okay, which means that I'm not able to understand, right? So verse 15, what is the conclusion? I will pray with the spirit. I will also pray with the understanding. I will sing with the spirit. I will also sing with the understanding. Which means he's saying, I will pray in words that people that I understand, I will pray with my language uh, that I know, but I will also pray with the Spirit. Right? I will also pray in tongues. Okay. Um, is tongue and language different? No. Um, it's just another uh, usage. When you say tongues, it's talking about language. So um, language, where the words are given by the Spirit, a language which is an earthly language, a language which is a heavenly language. Okay, so if one person asked God for tongues and he did not receive the tongues for a long time, what would be the res uh, reason and how to receive? Okay, so let me just share my uh, story. So I prayed, nothing happened. Then this person prayed over me, says, you know, after teaching all this uh, and said, you know, do you sense any words coming out? Nothing happened. Okay, so um, 
he just encouraged me. He said, you know, we've asked Jesus and he has filled you with the spirit and uh, we know that he answers. So why don't you just thank him? Okay. So fine. I, I didn't think too much about it. I think it was almost, uh, um, it was almost maybe three, four months or maybe even six months after that. Right. So uh, I just thanked the Lord. I said, I, I was no, not under any pressure, no condemnation. You know, I didn't feel condemned that, hey, uh, everybody's praying in tongues. I'm not praying in tongues. You know, I didn't feel condemned. I said, Lord, I asked you and I know that you've given. And it is for every believer. It is for me. So I just thanked the Lord. I just kept thanking the Lord. I said, thank you, Lord, for the gift of tongues. Thank you. So one day I was on my bike, Bangalore traffic. I was going to meet a client in office. I was going from one place to another. And I, it was on this road called Kaban Road. In traffic, full mask, helmet, bike, I started praying in tongues. I was just thanking God. I was just praising God. So there was no worship music, no church setting, no lifting of hands, hallelujah, praise the Lord, nothing. In traffic, where everybody's honking, hey, go, man. You know, everybody's <laughs> some road rage. Right in the middle of that, I started praying in tongues. Right? So, yes, it did not, it did not happen at the time when I was prayed for, but one should not give up. One should not feel discouraged. One should not, you know, um, say I've disqualified myself. No, God does not disqualify you. Come to an understanding. Maybe our understanding of it is, for example, I'll just say, share this. You know, our understanding of words. What is a word? Letters put together. Shabd kya hai? Right? Words, letters put together and it's a word. It's a, it's a word that you speak. But if you look at it, if you look at a word, it's a sound, right? I'm making a sound. I'm calling out, your, what's your name? Abhishek. Prashant. So, Bisal. Okay, so Bisal. Bisal is a sound. It's got two syllables, Bisal. It's a sound. So word is a sound. So what are you making when the Holy Spirit gives you these utterances or these words? These are sounds that you speak out that you say out that is all now suppose you don't have that understanding of it you're looking like okay how will the word come and you're constantly thinking about it well most likely you won't start praying in tongues you know because you're thinking you're preoccupied you know how will this be how will the word sound how will the word form well you sense a desire to make a sound that's a word right it does not make sense but you go ahead and speak out and make that a voice that word, voice that sound. Okay. Um, okay. That, I think that was the last question. Fine. So we'll take a break <clears throat> and then we'll come back at 11, 10 minutes. Um, if there are questions, we'll answer. Uh, otherwise, um, yeah, we'll, we'll look at some of these questions here. Okay. Thank you.